No, thank you very much for the introduction. So we have been speaking about ectasia susceptibility, but now we want to evaluate patients that already had surgery. How do we detect early ectasia? This is my financial disclosure. And let me start with our story. It's the story of this group, actually. We started many years ago with this very nice group. And actually, it was a group of friends that thought that biomechanics could make the difference in the management of patients. And what did we do so far? So we started with an accurate way of measuring intraocular pressure, that is the BIOP, that was developed by Professor Sheik in Liverpool. Then we went through creating normality values, because that was important to do the step forward. Then, as Renato uh, said, we created the CBI, then the TBI by the team of Renato, and recently we published the stress strain index and the evaluation post cross-linking. So in my presentation, I'm going to speak about post-laser vision correction ectasia. So the ectasia that is coming after already doing uh, laser. So we know that laser vision correction is an accepted procedure and is very safe. PRK, LASIK and SMILE can all develop ectasia in different levels. The early detection obviously is important. The sooner we detect it, the sooner we can do something. Up to date, what we do is we evaluate progression. So we evaluate if there is a change between two measurements. We know that the incidence of ectasia is very low, but it's possibly tremendous for the patient because these are patients that see very well and they can end up to transplant. And it has been detected as early as one week, but most of the time is several years after the surgery. It is important to know that all surgeries, again, can cause ectasia, including SMILE, and also LASIK extra should possibly cause ectasia as well. So first of all, we should remember to avoid causing ectasia, if that is possible, with everything that Renato has said. So we need to select accurately the patient and not say, well, this patient is thin, so I'll do a smile. So if the patient is not suitable for refractive surgery, it's not suitable. But what do we do if the patient already had it? So we know that in keratoconus, the primum movens, the first hit, is a change in biomechanics. <laughs> so the implementation of corneal biomechanics could potentially help in the early diagnosis of ectasia. But there are many challenges. Let's start. So first of all, we need something to separate normal from keratoconus, which we do have, is the CBI and the TBI. But stable post-laser vision correction patients are all abnormal with CBI and TBI, even if they are stable and fine. So to be able to separate between stable uh, laser vision correction and ectasia, you need a very large database and a semi-automatic approach. This is what I'm going to show you. So this is the new group. As you can see, we have a few friends more, and it's coming from all over the world with different ethnical origins. And we have used the Corbis ST. And this is the new study. It's the first time we uh, present it. We wanted to create a new version of the CBI that is called CBI LVC that aims to separate between stable post laser vision correction and laser vision correction ectasia and to validate it in a big data set. So, when I say big data set, I really mean it. It's more than 4,000 patients uh, from many different continents. And uh, there were healthy controls, keratoconus, stable post-laser vision correction, PRK, LASIK and SMILE, and ectasia post-laser vision correction. Why it is important to have these four populations? We need normal, keratoconus, stable, and laser, because we want to be able to separate all of this group correctly. The inclusion criteria were very healthy patients, as you can imagine, with no previous surgery, completely normal bad D, very clear keratoconus, post laser vision correction stable. They, to be sure of that, they were all operated by very world well-known uh, refractive surgeon and with at least one year of stability. And the post laser vision correction ectasia, all of them were confirmed by a masked cornea expert to confirm the diagnosis. We have used very high quality cornea's, Corvus examination cap captured with automatic release. What did we do? We used the logistic regression that is a way to separate between one group and the other. And we have created a semi-automatic approach. Why? Have I, as I told you, the CBI is abnormal in laser vision correction. Then we needed a second index to separate between keratoconus, 
and laser vision correction. And then a third index to separate between stable laser and ectasia. I will explain you everything in one second. And to avoid overfitting, we have used 80% of the database to create each step and we validate it with the rest of the 20% of the database. So this is practically how it works. We have a patient. Is it normal or abnormal? The first step, it, be, it divides between normal and everything else. Then you have the second steps that will separate between laser vision correction, stable and ectasia with keratoconus. And then you have the CBI LBC that will tell you whether is ectasia or, la or laser vision correction. This is how it will be, but then I will show you the software. So in the first step is an updated version of the CBI. These are the used variable. Obviously I cannot go through in details with each variable because of the time concern. But as you can see, the sensitivity and specificity was very high. You can see that it's slightly different compared to the uh, publication we have done with the uh, CBI. And the reason is because here we are separating keratoconus with also laser vision correction. So there is an additional population. Let's go to step two. That was aimed to separate between keratoconus and laser vision correction, either stable or not. In the final version of the software, you will be asked to confirm whether the patient had stable laser vision correction or not. So you can still select the final index. So this is just a completely automatic approach, but in the software I will show you how it works. And as you can see, the sensitivity and specificity is very high. So here we are at the last step, the CBI LBC. So when, when we have just laser vision correction and laser vision correction ectasia, and we want to separate between them. That's the last index, and that's the sensitivity and the specificity. Now remember that if you know by the history of the patient whether they had the laser vision correction or not, this is the sensitivity that you will have. Because you're already saying to the software whether it detects automatically that had the laser vision correction that they did. So if you don't know at all and you do a fully automatic classification, so you ask the software to decide for you, 87.6% of the patients were correctly classified in the four groups in the training set and 87.5% in the, in the test data set. Again, if you remember that, if you know the diagnosis, this is the sensitivity and the specificity you will have between laser vision correction and laser vision correction ectasia. So, to our knowledge, this is the first time that is an index based on biomechanics purely. It has been able to produce an efficient separation between stable laser vision correction and ectasia. It's probably the biggest database in history, including corneal biomechanics. We are excluding overfitting by the use of an external validation data set and it's almost fully automatic. But when CBI will help? If you want to have an early diagnosis of ectasia and you can imagine how important this is. If you have a patient that is regressing and you want to know is it regressing or is developing ectasia, this will help a lot. Or if you need to do a retreatment because of a regression, well, you're much safer and happier to do a retreatment when you know that the cornea is not ectatic. But let's see it in clinical practice because this will be implemented in the software. So for those who are uh, familiar with the uh, Corvi software, this is the ARV report in which you have the CBI, the BED-D and the TBI. So this is a keratoconus. As you know, the CBI, the TBI and the BED-D are all abnormal. And this is the Vinci Guerra screening report, which is slightly changed because it has the SSI. But as you know, this is what we have now. How it will work when you have a laser vision correction? This is what you will have. You will have warning, post laser vision correction detected. And you can say it's post PRK, it's post LASIK, it's post SMILE, it's post laser vision correction, but I don't know the surgery, or is no laser vision correction. If you click on either of the four, so you will get the CBI LBC automatically that you can see that here is telling you that is a stable laser vision correction. Please make, um, you have to see that the bed D and the TBI, as I explained you before, they are abnormal after surgery. So they are grayed out and they just focus your attention on the CBI LBC. And you get the same thing in the Vinci Guerra screening report. You get the warning, you can select and you get the CBI LBC. Remember that if the software makes a mistake, so it doesn't detect that is post laser vision correction, you can still click it yourself. 
This is an ectasia instead, so you still have the warning, post laser vision correction detected. Please confirm, you click, and you get an abnormal CBI LBC, sorry. That is 0 0.91. Again, bad D and TBI is written, no bad D calculation, no TBI calculation. And you get the same in the Vinci Guerra screening report with obviously exactly the same value. If, you, if it doesn't detect a, a post laser vision correction, you can, still you can still click it yourself. Thank you.